Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. Expert Dr. Maria Kataki is here to share information on both and why they're different. Dr. Kataki, Alzheimer's disease causes dementia? Alzheimer's disease is the, one of the most common causes of dementia for patients older than 65 years of age. This is correct. What's the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? Uh, most of my patients, uh, when we talk about their family history, they're telling me that uh, the mother or the father had some type of dementia but not able to specify. We diagnose dementia when people have cognitive or behavioral symptoms that would interfere with the ability to function at work or usual daily activities would represent a decline from previous level of functioning and uh, there is no delirium or any major psychiatric disorder that could explain those symptoms. Uh, so this is the clinical syndrome, the constellation of symptoms that represent the change from previous level of functioning. Now, when we identify that, we need to see what's causing uh, the dementia. And uh, Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia, but there are several other causes that could also cause dementia. What causes Alzheimer's? What we know is that there are neuropathological changes in the brain, amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles that would show up 20 to 25 years before people would have any symptoms of the disease. Um, there is a complicated uh, hypothesis, research hypothesis, to identify the etiology of those changes in the brain. Um, we have several um, research projects to see uh, we, uh, how we could develop medications that could alter the course of the disease, uh, prevent the disease, or eventually cure the disease. So we're in the process of learning more about the true cause of Alzheimer's disease. There are some medications, though, that are now being used that appear to be working, right? So in the year 2021, the FDA approved medication called adikenumab, which is an amyloid clearing medication. This is the first medication that modifies the course of the disease in Alzheimer's disease and was the second medication in the year 2021 uh, next to a medication for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis as this is modifying treatment for a neurodegenerative disease. Now, in April of 2022, CMS decided that they will no longer cover um, the, the cost of the drug unless patients are part of a clinical trial, either CMS or NIH sponsored, because we need to define the true clinical efficacy of the drug. However, it opens the door for a new era in the treatment and management of neurodegenerative conditions and specifically Alzheimer's disease. And there are several more medications that um, are awaiting evaluation. And uh, hopefully in January, we'll hear um, uh, FDA's um, review for lecanemab, which is another amyloid clearing medication. And many more are coming. So. Um, we're hopeful that uh, we'll be able to have efficacious uh, medications in the future uh, to treat the disease, prevent the disease, or one day cure the disease. The research is ongoing. Many people believe that dementia is just a part of aging, but is that correct? This is not correct. Um, if patients experience symptoms of memory loss um, or any decline from previous level of functioning, um, any behavioral changes um, should request an evaluation by the primary care doctor uh, who then could initiate a referral to a cognitive specialist to establish a diagnosis and treatment. Sometimes there are treatable conditions uh, that would cause dementia and that's always our first um, uh, basically evaluation. Um, is there any treatable cause of memory loss of dementia that we should address immediately so the patient uh, would improve? If this is not a treatable cause of memory loss or dementia, then uh, we need to consider other causes and provide appropriate management. Are there risk factors tied to this? There are risk factors. Um, if we're talking for Alzheimer's disease in particular, age is a major risk factor and um, accounts for maybe for 99% of uh, sporadic cases of Alzheimer's disease 
1% of the cases could be familial cases. In other words, might be a genetic component. Uh, there are some mutations that have been identified with an earlier age of onset of the disease, usually associated with these familial cases. Um, Apolipoprotein epsilon genotype has been identified as a genetic risk factor, and several other genes have been identified recently and represent a target of treatment. Lifestyle um, can definitely um, represent um, an era for uh, modifications, prevention, and risk factors. Um, and uh, of course, the better uh, people take care of their health, or especially cardiovascular health, uh, the higher chance they have to prevent um, uh, dementia, uh, cognitive issues uh, later in life. Several risk factors have been associated. Um, we try to see which one would be the most efficacious to uh, represent um, a target for treatment. There are simple things like exercise that um, might delay progression to dementia. And this is something we all can do without a prescription, even though it's nice when there are programs that people could participate. Mediterranean diet has been found to uh, delay progression to dementia. So little things like, well, uh, it's not that little to pay attention to our diet and exercise with our complicated lifestyle, but these are things that hopefully we can control and can have a great impact in our uh, good health um, uh, of the brain, of the heart, and our whole body. Does keeping your mind busy help? Mental stimulation is always a good friend. Um, and uh, we have the slogan, use it or lose it. This is absolutely true uh, in the era of dementia. And um, there is also the big, uh, basically, research related to cognitive reserve of the brain. Um, and this is why, uh, basically, uh, so many studies have been done to evaluate whether education earlier in life could prevent dementia later in life. There is no harm uh, from mental stimulation, can only uh, improve the cognitive function. Um, there is, though, um, one thing that uh, we always advise our caregivers, they should encourage the patients to do as much as they can, because sometimes if they have the disease, might be things that might be hard to do. Uh, mental stimulation is always one of the best friends. What do you do if you see signs of dementia in someone you love? Um, I initiate um, a visit with the primary care doctor, request a referral uh, for a cognitive specialist. Um, another easy thing to do while awaiting for an evaluation or even before a discussion has been started is you can access the website of the Cognitive and Memory Disorder Center at the Department of Neurology and try to download the SAGE test, the uh, basically self-administered geriatric cognitive evaluation that was developed by our director, Dr. Shari, and our team, and has been extremely helpful and easy to take. Um, there are instructions in the website um, how to um, score the test. Um, if there are any difficulties there, then um, there is a good reason to request a referral. Um, and further evaluation. And uh, if uh, uh, somebody can have uh, basically a very good score with the SAGE, there is a good chance there are no uh, true difficulties. And there is um, what we call a subjective cognitive decline. However, we're always open to evaluate our patients because um, sometimes if uh, people get concerned or somebody else get concerned, might be some medical condition that requires further attention, uh, evaluation, and management. Can you tell by looking at a brain through imaging if someone has dementia? Imaging uh, can be very helpful to differentiate some types of dementias, um, vascular dementias, demyelinating diseases, inflammatory conditions of the brain. Um, trauma um, can be diagnosed by imaging. So by looking at the brain, um, I don't know if you're referring just to structural imaging, like an MRI of the brain or a CAT scan, and of course, normal pressure hydrocephalus, subdural hematomas. There are several conditions we could identify just by looking at the brain. 
Another thing that we have available nowadays is basically an amyloid brain pad. Um, and uh, sometimes can be covered by Medicare on a case-by-case -case basis. And uh, we can see actual amyloid in the brain. Um, and if we see that, that uh, supports the, di the biological diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. We can also image tau um, in the brain. There are um, tau pads available still in development, still in the research era, but we're able to view the histopathologic changes associated with the biological diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So imaging can be extremely helpful. It's not the only thing that we should do to diagnose dementia or Alzheimer's disease, but it's definitely part of the standard of care recommendation, structural imaging. Functional imaging involving PET um, require a more, so more sophisticated evaluation and approval process, but uh, they're, all, they're both very helpful in the diagnostic process. Research plays a huge role in this, so where are we at Ohio State? Um, I think we live in um, a really very exciting times uh, for um, the treatment of these conditions because um, the, the approval of the adikenumab last year, even though it was very controversial, opened the era for, disease, for um, treatments that would modify the course of the disease. And uh, this is really a very big thing in Alzheimer's disease. The medications we have approved up to date, they, were all, they would all offer a symptomatic management. Um, it is significant, might delay progression uh, from one stage of the disease to another. However, none of them would modify the course of the disease. Um, the new um, uh, category of drugs that uh, basically would clean amyloid from the brain or uh, tau, they represent the disease modifying treatments for um, Alzheimer's disease. And uh, we're hopeful that um, uh, we'll have uh, better treatments in the future to help our patients. How close are we to FDA approval for some of these drugs? We have several clinical trials at the Cognitive and Memory Disorders Center at The Ohio State University. We're part of several national and international projects, and most of them um, offer a disease-modifying approach. Um, in January of 2023, we'll find out what FDA uh, feels about the lecanemab, uh, which is uh, basically a medication that also cleans amyloid from the brain. And we recently had a press release of positive results in a phase cl uh, three clinical trial. So we're all looking forward to the final assessment for this drug, and there are many more to follow. Uh, we definitely live in exciting times, and um, we're hopeful that we'll have better drugs in the future to help our patients. You've said the term amyloid several times. Is this a medication, and if so, what is it? So amyloid is one of the proteins that aggregates in the brain when uh, people have Alzheimer's disease um, and uh, seems to be a leading hypothesis in explaining the pathophysiological mechanism of the disease. Uh, what causes the amyloid deposition in the brain is still under a lot of research. Uh, several uh, clinical projects try to explain what happens in the brain. This is the protein that's causing the plaques, the amyloid plaques, the sticky plaques in the brain that cause a lot of trouble with cognitive function. The toxic amyloid that causes the amyloid plaques is not a good uh, protein for the brain. It causes damage. Um, it triggers a neuronal dysfunction, um, cerebral degeneration, neuronal death, um, and um, uh, basically loss of function. So it's not a good thing to be there. That's why we're so excited when we see that a medication can clean the amyloid plaques from the brain. What remains to be seen is how we can improve the cognitive function if we have drugs available to clean the toxic uh, amyloid from the brain. So the amyloid that causes the amyloid plaques is not a good protein from the brain. There is a way that a good amyloid can be derived, and that's another target for future treatments. The one though we see in Alzheimer's disease is not a good protein for the brain.